Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 81. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building making a second appearance. Introduce yourself to the audience again. It's T from Real Talk of Bob and T. That's right. This is Real Talk of Bob and T, and this is Bob. Y'all don't want to fill out the station or anything. I got y'all. I'll line that up for y'all. I got you. I got you. I got you. Once I go through the rundown, you'll jump in right there. Okay. <laughs> Let's hit the rundown now. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 p.m. on the E-Block Radio Network. Tuesdays is 2 p.m. on the GFT Radio Network. Wednesdays at 12 midnight and 12 a.m. and 12 p. I mean, at 8 a.m., 8 p.m. They love me so much they had to give me another slot. At uh, midnight. <laughs> Thursdays is WTNUPhilly.com at 12.30. Friday, I say podcast radio network at 10 a.m. And Saturday is THC Media at 10 a.m. Uh, shout out to my girls. What up, though? We still didn't get Sunday slot filled in, y'all. I'm still trying to make it happen. West Coast, what's up? Um, Custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle World on Instagram is my clothing line. Custom jackets, jerseys. Uh, got the sweatsuits, the baby jackets, the baby jerseys. We can make it all customized. We can customize it all. Just get with us. At Custom Hustle World on Instagram. Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company that is on Instagram only. But if you make it worth my while, I will slide. And that is roofing, plumbing, HVAC, flooring, carpeting, cleanouts, cleanups, however you need to make it happen. Bob and T, let the audience know where y'all are from, because we will slide out there and make something happen for y'all if it's worthwhile. We won six the area code. We're in Ohio. Yeah. The land is. Yeah, we're in Cleveland. (laughs) International hype is not just a hashtag. It is a way of life. All right. Episode 81. Shouts out to my folks, Bob and T, making a second appearance, like I said. This one, I thought of y'all when I thought of this topic. Is it selfish selfish of you not to grow in a relationship? Bob, we want to start with you on this one because T was way too eager. So we're going to start with Bob on this one. (laughs) For sure. I think it is selfish not to grow. You know, uh, as because things change, you know, uh, as, as before we get into the relationship, you know, uh, there were one way, but as the relationship goes on, we change. So, you know, you kind of uh, change a little bit for your mate or whatever like that. You know, I always say you bend, but you don't break. You okay. know, change a bit for sure. So I think it is a bit selfish because so many things change from day to day, from minute to minute, as mm-hmm. a matter of fact. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, I know, like in the beginning of our marriage, I was definitely one way. I mean, of course, you know, newly married, not understanding, like, I don't want to say the roles of a marriage, but not understanding, like, hey, you know, I shouldn't it's be perfect. No, nah, it's perfectly fine to say none of us, we can't understand the roles because we haven't been in them yet. I could watch you do it for years, but until I'm in that seat, you can't understand. Right. Yeah. So like when, when we were dating, it was different. Like, I didn't know what time Bob got home. You know, we, we never lived together before we got married. But once we got married, I'm like blowing up your pager, your cell phone, not <laughs> saying I was a pest, yeah. but you know That's what I'm it. saying? That's Let it. everybody know how long y'all been married, though. We like to, you know, glorify those things here on Hot House Podcast. Right? How long have you been married, Bob? Uh, it's been 22, it's 22 years. 22 years. This past year. Yeah. Yep. So... We don't, we ain't glossing over or just sneezing at 22 years now. Y'all relationship and graduated college. Okay. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's been a while. Y'all got your y'all got your degree. God damn it. We do. <laughs> got that doctor's right. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I say, yeah, let's that let's we want to celebrate that here. You know, these unions are a beautiful thing when they're working out and they're productive. Black love, I Thank say, you. but it it's not easy. I don't know. Um, like I was saying, like in the beginning, I would call them, text them, be like, hey, you know, where you at when you're coming home? And I remember my aunt told me, she was like, why are you bugging him so much? You know what I'm saying? You know that he's not out here doing anything that he shouldn't be doing. Because a lot of times he was with my uncle, which was his best friend at the time. 
So it took for me to have to actually step back and change that a little bit. Like, okay, I can't keep doing this because then I saw it started to put a damper on our relationship. Sure enough, mm -hmm. because uh, I think uh, it, it was times where she knew what time I got off, and it was like, uh, well, hey, it don't it don't take you that long. It take you such and such time to yeah. get from work to the house, and I'm, I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's other things I do in between time, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and, and you shouldn't be clocking me like that. See, I don't think it was too much of a clock because I didn't see that in like my parents' relationship. My dad went to work, came home. It was like work, go home. He didn't go out. He didn't, you know, do anything extra. He was more of a homebody. Right. And so I didn't know, you know, as a wife, like, okay, this is abnormal for me going into a marriage where you want to be out to like one, two o'clock in the morning or, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, this is odd. I'm not that's the bullseye right there. That's the part, like you said, and you were saying in the beginning is I didn't know what to, I didn't know how to, what role it was for me to play here as the wife. We don't know which way role it is to play as the husband because we haven't been in these roles. So all you have to compare it to is what you saw, whether it was like you said, your mom or your dad, which it was the same for me, which it could be your aunt, your uncle, your neighbors, whoever it is, that was your marital influence. Mm -hmm. And if they did it this way, this is what you come in thinking it's supposed to be. This right. is the early problem that a lot of us have. It'll be, this is how I saw it. This is how I saw it. And now we both trying to get each other to what we know instead of where we're growing together. This is why I came. This is how this topic came up. Beautiful T. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was a, a change for me. And we had talked about this on one of our episodes where, I mean, marriage and relationships are growth. You know, you're not going to be, I'm not the Where same. Where exactly could the listeners find that episode, T? Absolutely. Um, actually, I can't remember which episode it, uh, number it is, but it's called Growing Marriages. Copy okay. that. Yeah. So, and it's just like, you know, we, I'm not the same as I was 20 something years ago, nor is it, he. Nor am I. Right. So we For had sure. to change. I, I think I did more changing than you, yeah, but he'll probably you. think the opposite. Of course you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I, 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 it definitely was a change in growth for both of us. I, I, I see the change in both of us, and I see the growth in both of us, because there are certain things that we didn't used to do mm -hmm. that we do, just, you know, to, to make each other a little bit happier or, or different things, just because we know that that person would be happier with this and right. say that. It's more like accommodating. Well, I guess you are accommodating, because it's things like Bob's you got it. You got to accommodate and compromise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's how this whole, like I said, this is how the topic came up. Um, it's selfish of you because like you're saying, you have to find a way for us to grow together. We have to find a way for this thing to work for us. That might not be a, some people don't have a conventional marriage and it's like, that's just what works for them. But you got to get there. You don't walk in the door knowing right after we said, I do it. Yep. This is how it's going to work out for us for the next 25 years. Because if you come in with those expectations, this is the difference, like you were saying, in the uh, dating stage and the marriage stage is the expectations are different. The expectations are raised now. There's more pressure in the marital situation when we don't really even have to do all that. We mm -hmm. got married and none of that has to change today. That'll just gradually change as we grow older and we start to look at things differently. We start to want different things and like that compromise that you were making there. You compromise and change in these relationships because you like, all right, I love this woman or this man enough because I'm going to say I'm going to choose you above all else, which means I have to be willing to compromise some of who I am and what I am, not at the core of my values and all of that. But mm -hmm. it can't be like, well, I only like pancakes and you like waffles. We ain't never eating waffles because that ain't what I like. They ain't what we ate on Sundays in my house. It can't be like that. Yeah. You have to compromise sometime. Maybe you could just make both. Like you eat pancakes, I'll eat waffles, but you can't just say, oh, well, this is who I am, how I am, and what I am, and I'm not changing that for nobody. Because if you right. got that kind of mentality, then you need to be like the folks who are on episode 79 who were, they don't want to get married. <laughs> like, or not even married. You don't even want to be in a, you shouldn't even want to be in a relationship if you just like, this is where I am. Because when I was at that stage of life, like I constantly tell people, when I was at that stage, I was telling people, look, I don't want no girl. You ain't going to be my girl. And that ain't what this is. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that because that ain't what I wanted. Once I got to the point where I wanted to say like, okay, hey, I'm willing to do these different things for her. That gets you to the point of, all right, well, let's just get married then. 
but that kind of happens gradually and you got to grow into that that's how i understand like people will just be like it's been two weeks i gotta get her <laughs> like yeah mm-hmm. you don't know her i mean you don't know the person and then I, I guess my thing is if you're not willing to make some kind of sacrifice then you shouldn't be in any kind of relationship because every relationship be that. So, no. so, so i mean you got to go in knowing that this person is going to change over time I mean, yeah. I've changed over the last 20 years. Bob has changed over the last 20 years. Am I that girl that was blowing up his phone 20 years ago? No, because, I mean, go ahead. Do what you got to do. Have fun. Come back home. I know you're coming back home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if you, you know, God forbid, hopefully he's not doing anything wrong. But if he is, okay, let her know she got to do this. She got to do that. Um, I'm taking this. I'm taking that. I mean, it's more responsibilities and more. It's another thing, though, too. Like, it's nothing wrong with letting your spouse know what's going on people always say like we're partners we we are equal okay so we equal partners then and i know like you said bob get off at six o'clock why are you coming home at two in the morning as mm-hmm. a partner you need to say hey look you going here there wherever is cool as long as we communicate that mm-hmm. but if you get off at six and i don't see you till two something is up <laughs> like yeah now that hard. is you know what I'm saying? it's nothing wrong with you saying oh no me and i ain't gonna go catch the game and you know uh-huh. We gonna go do this or go do that. If she say, "Hey, me and my girlfriend gonna go here, or go that," that's cool as long as you communicate that. At a certain time, though, now I shouldn't have to call you and say, "Hey, look, it's two o'clock, it's three o'clock. Where the fuck are you at?" Yeah. I shouldn't have to make that phone call. Like, unless we are in an emergency situation, it's like either you should already call me and say we on the side of the road because <laughs> the car just broke down, mm-hmm. or you know something tragic has happened, but. I shouldn't be rolling over at two, three in the morning. You ass ain't here. And you got off at six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, oh, I would, you know, that's something I would say in the beginning of a relationship. That's something that you need to communicate. What my uncle would always I mean, say, it was the unspoken rules. Yeah. You have the unspoken rules of the house, of the marriage. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, right from wrong. Right. And you need to do right. And, and you don't want to, you know, think about it like this too. Uh, if you don't want it done to you, why why would you do it to somebody else? Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about things like that, if you would have a problem with it, uh, they shouldn't do it to you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you would have a problem with doing, doing it to somebody else. You know, when I got married, I thought completely different than the way I did when I was single. I said, I'm going to give a 110%. So that way, you know, I hope I hope everything works out. But with me giving it 110, uh, if it doesn't, I can't say it was from me not trying mm-hmm. because I gave it over 100 percent. You know, I, I go in halfway. I went in completely. I was the same way, Bob. Uh, when I first told people because I got engaged in March and married in July because I'm not a big fan of let's argue about who Bob and T sit next to at the table. What are the centerpieces going to look like? Who's doing this, that, or whatever? All of that shit don't matter. I can tell you this. I got married six years ago. I don't even know where the wedding pictures is at. I think they're in storage. They might be. (laughs) Um, Because I can remember vividly and tell you that my wedding story, it might be an episode, because my wedding was a crazy time and all of that. Like I said, the the chaos of three months uh, or four months of planning and all of that, like a whole different topic for another day. But... (laughs) My man said to me, like, so, like, you still going to do you when you go out or like, <laughs> so I'm like, what's the point of getting married then? If if I still had any of that in me, then there was no point. If you wasn't at the point of change, then if you wasn't at the point of compromising and saying, all right, look, I need to you got to grow into something else. Like you said, Bob, once I got married, everything changed. The priorities changed. I started to look at the situation differently because now, like, I'm completely uh, responsible for this woman. This woman is completely responsible for me. That's what I tell people all the time. No, I own her ass, but she owns mine just as much as I own hers. Okay. Yeah. I got paperwork on her ass. I changed her whole name. Okay. She had to give me everything to be with me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but like I said, this is a, this is a 50, 50 situation as far as she owns mine too. I got no problem admitting that or saying it because that's what it is. That's a get. That's one of those things where you got to sacrifice and you got to be willing. Like Bob said, I'm gonna put in as much as I possibly can into this thing. Most people will come in and be like, 
Well, if it don't work out, what you, you shouldn't get married if you already thinking about if this don't work out. If you already working on an exit plan and a strategy for, oh, yeah, they got little, little condos over here down at the, you shouldn't be in this situation. Abort. Get out now. Fuck it. Like, ask for your ring back and go get that down payment. <laughs> like, right. Man, I think people go into marriage not thinking like we did, I don't want to say a couple of decades ago. Now everything is just so free. You know what I'm saying? If you're going into a marriage, like you said, thinking that this isn't going to last or let me have an exit plan, you shouldn't do it. Marriage sure. should be forever. I mean, this, this is just my opinion, unless, you know, there's adultery. You're like, I gotta, you're like, I got to look at a mom. This is going, this ain't going to last but for 10 years because I've seen what 48 going to look like. <laughs> you know, you, I mean, you got to go in no there's going to be work. There's Both of you are going to make changes. I mean, because you're not the same person that you were. Ten years ago. That's the that's the thing though, T. We both should. We can't assume change in everybody. Some people have been the same stupid motherfucker that they was in 2004. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. So you got situations where people will be like, like I said, this is who I am, this is what I am, and I ain't changing that for nobody. I don't know how you not even just to talk about marriages, because everybody who's listening to this ain't married. We're talking about that because we're married, but in any type of relationship. It's like some people are stubborn enough to just be like, this is what it is and this ain't changing. I'm not willing to bend or capitulate or uh, I'm not willing to compromise so that we can grow together. And if that is the situation, then see you when I see you. All right. Grow. Right. right. You got to grow. You got to grow together. Yeah. You can't you compromise. You grow. Yeah, you there's no bend, growth. Some kind of movement, you know, because look, people are not going to stay the same. Mm-hmm. They aren't. And I think that's what people fail to realize. And then you, you do have some people that's just like, I'm the same way I was 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? I'm the same party person, irresponsible person, um, can't keep money in the bank, you know, but that's, that's something that's that they- cool. Yeah. But that's cool at 22. That's not cool at 42. Right. You, but- like once you got three kids and you talking about, yeah, we you know, I blew a check last night. And what are you talking about? <laughs> like, right. Nigga, school just started a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> like. You didn't buy no uniforms and shit? Like, what are you talking about? You had the sp- ace of spades. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's just being just that person who's just not... I mean, some people take a while to to develop, to, to grow. And some people <laughs> never do. Oh. Right. Yeah. You know, it's going to be uh, February the 8th every year. And some people's birthday just going to keep coming and that's just going to keep passing them up. I know I didn't said that the last couple of weeks on the podcast, but that shit is true as hell. That some people just have birthdays and some people grow. Just because you got older don't mean that you just your ass grew. Yeah. Um, so now, <laughs> let me throw this one at Bob. What would you say is something that uh, you changed because of your your relationship? We're not even gonna go say marriage; just say relationship. Even though we all know, you know what it is. You know what I. <laughs> I can say that I've changed a bit of uh, because of my relationship. It's just uh, patience to to just watch them to watch them make a change uh, and just and just kind of be cool with it, but just keep an eye on it as long as uh, the things don't get too out of too too crazy, you know. Uh, just watch them make their change because I know we all make a change a little bit, you know, as long as they Hold up. thank you. I think you may have misunderstood the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, what was the thing that you've changed? Oh. <laughs> because of your relationship. Because uh, you was losing the hell out of me. I'm like, where the fuck is Bob going with this one? <laughs> like, what have I've... you changed? You know, what sacrifice did you believe that you've made because of your relationship? the the questions the 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 all the the, the questions all the who time. what when where and why right I, because I wasn't used to it I, I I was never in that position with somebody to the point where they could just ask me where you been who you been and, and how long and you know and all this and all that I, I wasn't used to that and so it sounds like you definitely gonna make a change to that. Hey yo, I'm off John, bro. <laughs> Where you going? Outside. <laughs> right, where Why you go? Why you asking me where I'm going? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Damn, that was always like my mom. You know, like that. The head always goes straight to my mom. Never was asking me what the fuck was I going. Why are you like outside with the same niggas I'm always with? So I don't know why you. <laughs> T, what would you say was the thing that you sacrificed? Um, I would say just learning him. Like I'm one who, if we're talking, or even if it's like an argument. I want it right then and there. There's no, you got to go cool off. You know, Bob is one who will step back. He doesn't want to talk about it right then and there. And for me, I was the one who's like, no, it has to happen now. I want to talk about it right now. So I've learned to kind of like give him his space to go and get his head space together before we come back and talk about the problem. So. Yeah, because that's one of them things. Once you say it, it's said. So if I'm telling you that I need this second so that I can make sure that I'm saying the right thing, because once you say something, once that glass is broken, there's no sweeping this shit up. You're going to be finding pieces of this shit for the rest of your life. For right. the rest of your life. And in the beginning, right. I, was, I was so just like, no, I, I want to do it right now. We're going to talk about it right now. There's no waiting. He would wait a couple of days. And I'm like, oh, this just isn't normal. I want to talk about this today. We're going to talk about it this second. So I've learned to just back away i know he wants to take a couple of days and a lot of times that the reasoning behind that was you need to calm yourself down you know you you got to calm down so i'm i'm giving it a few days a couple of days just for for me to get everything together and then too to let you kind of calm down see you always said that but i did not think that i was just like hot just mm. yeah, i don't think you would think yeah, but you know, I've nerve again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Go like, ahead, don't talk that. Talk that out. Don't let me interrupt. Yeah, calm down, baby. Calm down. I, but see, I just don't. And I mean, I well, like I said, I don't think I was that just raw, like you said. I mean, I know I you know. Sometimes I just want to get my point across right then and there. I understand. Um, what's the word for? But I'm just saying. That's one of the things where uh, this is how I always handle those situations is one, uh, I got a, my cousin grabbed me two seconds after I do and said, you want your marriage to work? Keep niggas out your business. Niggas includes everybody. So if I have marital questions or just like I need another perspective type of thing, I could ask the question to, I got my aunt and my uncle been together since they was like 13, they're in their 70s. Mm -hmm. I got my cousins who've been married. I got a uh, shout out to Tosh. I talk to Tosh all the time about different shit. And I got a bunch of people where it's like, I'll bounce different situations and different scenarios off of them without going, hey, this is exactly what happened and what, this is how it went. And the thing that I kind of got from that is like, try to put yourself in her shoes. Try to see what you're saying this, what is she hearing? Now, obviously you won't be able to 100% always with that, but it kind of makes you look at it from the other person's perspective. Like Tia's saying, I don't see that what I was doing was coming off that way, but she don't know how it was coming off to you. Right. So if you do that and you put yourself in that situation and it's always like, okay, you try to be more empathetic to what the other person is saying. And actually when you're in the midst of an argument, the problem with arguments is why me and my wife don't argue. So I don't argue with people is if we argue and nobody's listening, right. we having a discussion or a conversation, now a conversation is I say something, you're listening, and then you react to what I'm saying. But if we arguing, you just waiting to just get your screams in. Like, you uh -huh. breezed all past all the stuff that I said because you had 25 things that you wanted to say yeah. or vice versa. So that's how I always like try to handle those situations. Just like, all right, when I said that, because I come off aggressive as hell with everybody only person who gets i tell people all the time that i'm not doing this to nobody my mom is the only person who doesn't get this energy everybody else gets this energy if i meet your mom or your grandma or somebody like that different situation but me and anybody dealing in a situation this is it for everybody <laughs> my kids everybody gets this <laughs> the thing that i would say for me though that was the biggest change sacrifice type of thing was just the family dynamic uh, I always said, like, if I had kids, man, I got to be like when I'm 40, just because I knew from my niece was born uh, when I was 17, when I was in 12th grade. And just from having her like in the room with you and all that, it's like, oh, you got to move that because she'll eat it. She's going to knock this over. 
You got to move this cord. Just having those little things where it was like, shit, this is a lot of me adjusting what I got going on for somebody else. This doesn't seem like the thing to do for me. Now, for my niece, I love her dearly like a child, like one of my own. But like it was a lot of you adjusting to this person. So I was like, I never wanted to do this. Like when you and your young, like you just was talking your young, wild and free days. Yeah, I was not for this at all. Now, having my uh, oldest child being with my wife, like it was just like, okay, you start to have that change and you start to see, all right, well, the ultimate thing was like, if you ran into them in the mall and she with another nigga, how you going to handle that? (laughs) And I'm not going to handle that well. So... (laughs) You got to start to look at yourself and make those evaluations of yourself and say, what you doing here? So, because family is huge for me. Family is a very big thing. Family ain't always the niggas who got the same blood and grandma as you, but family is a huge thing for me. Like, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you. And if I ever tell anybody that I fuck with you, then I don't need to tell you a thousand times that I do because I'll show and prove that through however much time it is that we've spent with me telling you that. Because I'm not a wild things are just good kind of guy. Like, it's not going to always be, you know, prom night. It's going to be some days where shit is going all the way left and you're still supposed to be there for somebody. But if you really say, like, we family and I'm in your corner and all of that type of shit, yeah, that's that's me. So, like I said, once I get to, all right, fuck it, we going to be married, kids and all of that, like, I'm go all the way in with that shit because that's just my personality. Right. Yeah, like I said, and I, and I still go back to the the growth, the change, and, and over a time period, a person has to change. You have to grow because you're not who you were when you were 17. At least you shouldn't be. You know, you, should, you shouldn't be wait. You shouldn't waste 35. You shouldn't waste 25 years because you never decided to grow up. Like, <laughs> and in a relationship, you both grow. I mean, I've seen changes in him. He's seen changes in me. Do I like all the changes? No. I'm sure you don't like all the changes that I've made, but it's just something that you you deal with because it's like love. Like I can deal with this. You know what I'm saying? He's not doing the worst thing. He's not putting his hand. You compromise those little things because you love this person. Yeah, exactly. So you just learn to to deal with it. You know. So you know? Can I can I do leaving a bottle of water out? No, but I deal with it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, but you know, it's just little things that. They say little things add up to big things, but you can't just take those little problems and escalate. Just sit down and talk. Little things add up to big things if, like, bang, there it go. Little things add up to big things if we never talk about them. Yeah. You just keep sweeping them under the rug, sweeping them under the rug, and we don't ever address this shit. Now, one day, it's like, where the fuck did that come from? That came from three years of you doing this dumb shit, and then the other person never saying, yo, I don't like this shit. That's my, that's a huge thing for me is, like, if you do something I don't like, like, yo, let's talk about this now. Let's not mm-hmm. implement this into your game. Let's not get this a part of the routine. I don't fuck with that at all. And this is not what I'm with. <laughs> like, if you don't fuck with something, tell me and we can cut this right out. Right. Like I said, I own her ass and she owns me. <laughs> Honesty, you got to be honest. Yeah. I think it was an episode of yours, time where you were saying that sometimes you're not always going to want to hear the truth in a relationship. But um, I can't pretty much put into, I can't remember exactly how you said it. But you were saying that, you know what I'm saying, listen to what the person's saying. If you can't take the truth, then maybe you shouldn't be in the, the situation. That everything is not going to be sugar-coated. The, the truth hurts. and uh, mm-hmm. The truth is brutal. The truth is honest, obviously, because it's the truth. But sometimes the truth is the thing that you really need to hear. And if you if you hear that truth from a person, like, uh, you hear that truth from a person that you know it comes from a place of love, and there's no malice and there's no like they're trying to put you down belittle you or nothing like that then you can take it in and be like damn it stung but this is why they're saying that again evaluate yourself and look at look at it from a point of everybody's not attacking you everybody's not against you everybody ain't hating like some people are genuinely telling you this shit because you need to get better at it because you keep doing this shit um let's switch it up now and talk a little bit about 216 the blend Mm -hmm. when did we start 216 to blend and go ahead when when did we start 216 to blend well that had to be uh april of this year yeah uh april of this year you know we wanted uh an outlet for you know music that we like to listen to uh yesterday's r&b and hip-hop 
you know, and and then too, it's a platform for, you know, other podcasters. You know, we have different podcasts on there. Things Who are that- some of the podcasts that we have there on 2160 <laughs> Blend? Bob, throw out those names and give out all of that good information to the fine folks that listen and hit the button for the How to Hustle podcast behind. Absolutely. So Mondays, uh, midnight on Sunday, midnight on it's Monday morning and 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Mondays. You can listen to Real Talk with Bob and T. Mm-hmm. Tuesdays, 9 a.m., 9 p.m. You can listen to the Jock Johnson show. And of course, Wednesdays. Shout out to Uncle Jock Johnson. I talked to Uncle the other day. Go ahead. <laughs> you can listen okay. to Hine. Uh, Thursdays, we have Let's Find Them. Um, oh, Underground Queens, I believe it's Wednesday as well. You have Kids Corner. Shout out to Underground Queens, too. I had them on before. I think Underground Queens is like a top three downloaded episodes. Shout out to the Underground Queens. Oh, congratulations, ladies. Uh, Saturdays, we have Kids Corners. So if you have teens, tweens, you know, we have two podcasters that are on there. One who talks to teens and tweens about everyday life. And then right. you have some laughs with Hey My Nieces. And we have, uh, oh my gosh, we got a couple other people that are coming on. And I apologize because I can't remember their days that they're coming to. But just check it out. If you're a person who is a midnight person, midnight, you can listen to a podcast, get some great music after that. 8 a.m., 8 p.m., do it all over again. Right. So, and, and, and where a- where would you tell the folks to go so that they can do that, T? Hey, I'm going to tell you, Hank, it's so sweet. All you have to do is Google 216 to blend. <laughs> and oh, it, shit. It's there. You can actually see the episode, hit 216 to blend. Um, Hank, Jock, uh, and, hey, and, Bonisa's Kids Corner. That's right. And, and, you know, we always make room for new podcasters that would like to uh, be on the, the radio station also mm-hmm. uh, at, and they can reach us at uh, 216 to blend uh, at gmail.com at gmail.com or either at real talk with Bob and T at gmail.com mm-hmm. you know and then this I-365 but yeah just google 216 to blend Copy that. Hey, man, listen, told y'all them Google situations. You, I tell people all the time, you can Google my name. Do not ever feel like you are, uh, you got to like half mention that. That means that you have worked enough and worked hard enough to get your shit to be able to mm-hmm. be searched and found that easy. So don't ever like, oh, yeah, you can Google us. Now I tell niggas, Google me, okay? I ain't I give everybody <laughs> one of these, okay? They come free with any order from Custom Hustle. You know what I'm saying? Google my name. All my shit pop up. It'll lead you to my Instagram, my Twitter, and the links from the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is a beautiful, beautiful situation there. I definitely wanted to shine a light on 216 to blend, you know, let people know what y'all was doing over there with that. Now, one more thing before we go. Uh, uh, <clears throat> T, have we found the dude bar yet? <laughs> <laughs> Nope. <laughs> no. That was an episode of Bob and T where T is telling Bob, like, yeah, you know, you meet the guy and like, you know, y'all gonna go to the dude bar. Bob is like, what the f- is the dude bar? If you come up to me talking about, let's go to the dude bar, I'm gonna be like, yo, get away from me. I was wholeheartedly with Bob that day. I didn't know what T was talking about, the dude bar. I text her, I text Bob, the dude bar? What the fuck is that? <laughs> we ain't going there. <laughs> We are not going to the dude bar. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> one more thing. I thought that's what y'all called it, the dude uh, bar. Uh, uh, especially these days, the dude bar might be a whole nother situation. <laughs> before we wrap before we wrap this episode up, uh, this is something that I keep wanting to touch on because I'll be forgetting about it, but you know, I got a lot going on, as y'all know. Uh, How to Hustle Seminars. Y'all were some of the folks who were a part of How to Hustle Seminars. Mm-hmm. Give the listeners a sneak peek or tell them what it is that you got from the seminars? T, we're going to start with you this time. Uh, I would say one of the biggest things I got is actually um, connecting with other people to do promotions and advertise. Because after leaving with you, we have advertisers now. Um, we promote in different restaurants here in Ohio and beauty stores. So that was the big takes I took. Heim gave some amazing information over those course of weekends. So... Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I think the, the biggest thing that I took away from this is to treat it like a business, treat it, treat it for real, you know, uh, because there are so many different things that can come from it uh, when you treat it like it's something real, 
you know, uh, like the things that uh, that T brought up, you know, um, I you know different advertisers, different things like that. Uh, when you treat it for real, other people see it as being real, so for sure. So I really. Hey, man, like I told y'all on How to Hustle Seminars, which can still be purchased, get in my DMs, you know what I'm saying? You want to get the whole five-part series or you want one, two episodes, we can make all of that happen. I told you, like you just said, sponsorships is what it's all about. Two wristbands, $4, made me change my whole perspective on how this whole situation and this whole game works. So yeah. I want to commend y'all. Uh, one, thank you all again for coming on the How to Hustle Seminars. Uh, y'all thought enough of me to spend your money with me, and I appreciate that. And shouts out to y'all. Congratulations on doing 216 to blend. I told y'all that privately, but let's tell y'all that publicly. Give you your flowers while you can smell them. I hate people who show up on a poster at your funeral and we was the best of friends and everything was the greatest of times, but I never did discuss none of that with you. So salute to y'all. <laughs> Thank you. That was episode 81 of the How to Hustle podcast. With Hype. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.